Hi, I'm Dr. Stan Kucher, and today we're going to talk about an important topic called mental health literacy. Mental health literacy has arisen from the concept of health literacy, which is focusing on helping people understand how to take care of their health, how to know when they're ill, and how to get the best care for themselves when they are ill. International organizations like the World Health Organization have made health literacy a priority. Different governments from around the world, United States, Canada, Australia, to name a few, have made health literacy a priority. Mental health literacy is also about knowing about your mental health. It's comprised of four different things. One is knowing how to obtain and maintain good mental health. The second is understanding mental disorders and their treatment based on the best available scientific evidence. Third is decreasing stigma. And fourth is improving help seeking efficacy. And by that I mean knowing when to get help, knowing where to go to get the help you need, knowing what to expect when you go there, and having the tools to empower you to help you get the best care that's available. Now, addressing mental health literacy for young people is ideally done in schools. Why? Because schools are where young people usually are. And schools are in the business of literacy, whether it's math literacy or language literacy or history, geography, whatever, schools know how to address literacy. In the primary grades, mental health literacy is addressed by improving the culture of the school, making the school a place which is mentally health friendly. It's also addressed by social emotional learning, programs which enhance social emotional learning, best evidence-based program, because not every single program that says it enhances social emotional learning actually really does. In junior high and high, the focus is different. Here, mental health literacy is best embedded into school curriculum so that young people learn about mental health the same way they do about history, about geography, about mathematics, about science. So it isn't something different or foreign or out there. We know that marching around the school to walk for mental health doesn't improve mental health literacy, and we know that having an auditorium on suicide prevention doesn't prevent suicide. We do know, and we have really good evidence, that when we embed mental health literacy into school curriculum, we improve students' knowledge, we change their attitudes dramatically, the stigma goes way down, and we improve their capacity for help-seeking efficacy. The other thing with embedding mental health literacy into school curriculum, is that teachers have to become mentally health literate themselves in order to teach it. As a result of that, there's good evidence that teachers' own mental health literacy improves dramatically. Their knowledge goes up, the stigma goes down, and they can influence not only their students, but they can influence their own families. They can influence other teachers, and they can influence other members of their communities. So we get a huge value add when we embed mental health literacy in schools through curriculum. And it doesn't cost much. And it can be done anywhere because every school has three components, teachers, students, and curriculum. When you look at post-secondary education, it's a different kettle of fish. Because there, students are much more independent. There they don't go to the same place with the same people every time, and many of them are far away from their families. So in post-secondary mental health literacy, we have to have a different approach. And here, we need to think about reaching young people, not again, like mental health is something out there, but mental health is part of everyday life. So we need to create resources, for example, like our transitions resource, which embeds mental health literacy into the everyday life of a student. How do you get a good roommate? How do you deal with your finances? 
how to deal with sex and sexuality, and oh yeah, what about mental health? So we have to think carefully, we have to think smart, we have to talk smart about mental health literacy. We have to direct our energies depending where the student is and how old they are and what grade they're in and what school they're in. So for young people, we have to focus, as I said, on social emotional learning. For junior high and high school, on curriculum embedded mental health literacy and for colleges, universities and other post-secondary institutions on resources that the students can access easily themselves, such as apps. Together, we can do this. We can enhance mental health literacy across every single one of these domains. But it takes your work, whether you're a teacher, an educator, a health provider, a parent, a student, whatever, working together, using best evidence to guide us. We can improve mental health literacy for young people. We can improve mental health promotion, prevention, and care by doing that. I'm Dr. Stan Kucher at teenmentalhealth.org. Visit our website. Give us your ideas on how you think we can improve mental health literacy. Thank you for taking the time.